Welcome to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel and tonight I'm going to stay out testing two sleeping bags at the same time in roughly minus 20 degrees weather. I'm out here in my own backyard and I'm about to dig myself a little trench where I can stay tonight. So stay tuned and let's see how this test night goes. The idea, of course, is that I'm going to use two sleeping pads, this one and then my inflatable pad. Same thing with my sleeping bags. My better winter sleeping bag is rated to minus 18 degrees. So even if it wouldn't get all the way down to minus 20, it's still pushing it a bit. So I will put inside of that sleeping bag my zero degree bag. And I will put those specs on the screen then later on, but now I'm just prepping this area, bringing everything outside here, because if I would be somewhere hiking, camping, doing that sort of stuff during winter, my gear would be in my rucksack, and obviously my rucksack isn't going to be warm either, so it makes sense to bring everything now during the day, while well, there is plenty of daylight, to bring everything here, lay it all flat, and then this evening, later on, I will come here and see how tonight feels like in this setup. And of course, the main reason why I'm using the pump bag instead of just blowing air directly into this inflatable pad is that during winter in cold temperatures, the moisture from your breath can then freeze inside your sleeping pad, potentially not just damaging the sleeping pad and the structures and the insulation, but also then providing in the end less of an R value, so less of insulation that the sleeping pad then doesn't work as intended. So sleeping pads are in place, next up sleeping bags. This massive pile here is then the sleeping bag setup. So actually in total I will have four layers of bags around me. So starting from the outside, PV bag, to-go systems, Velar UL. Then my main cold weather sleeping bag, the inner bag, both of these are down bags, not super high-end, pretty basic stuff. And then the inside, of course, my silk liner, not so much for warmth, but just to keep these bags clean. Turns out it's a bit difficult process to set everything up like so, because they haven't been in their compression sacks, but starting from the outside, I guess. So first off, I will deploy this PV bag. The reason I'm using this PV bag is, of course, if it's snowing during the day or during the night, or if wind blows any snow on top of the bags, it at least should keep the bags a bit drier. And during the night, if I slip away from the pad, then same thing applies. This keeps the bags protected. All right, that's two. Then number three. And then to finish things off, let's put this liner in as well. All in all, this is not just a test of how I'm going to make it for the night if I'm warm enough, but also a test if I'm even able to get inside of all of these bags. It's, it's going to be tricky. It's tricky already with PV bag and a sleeping bag, but now there's four layers, so definitely a good challenge in that regard as well. And then because as you can see, this PV bag has a box screen, I'm going to flip the whole thing over. And now I'm just going to let this combination sit here for seven to eight hours until it's late enough for me to go to bed. Then I will come outside again, strip down to my base layer, 
and get inside of all of these bags. And uh, talking about the base layer, so I'm going to sleep with my Merino wool socks on, wearing Varustelleka level 2 Merino wool base layer and this beanie. If I do get cold during the night, then I will bring uh, extra wool sweater with me. That should do the trick, if nothing else. Looks to be minus 20, maybe minus 20 and a half. It's coming nine o'clock in the evening. We just came from walking the dog. As you can see, <laughs> I'm not terribly warmed up, but a bit. Definitely these um, layers are just barely enough for these temperatures when moving. <sighs> but I guess I will find my headlamp and put a balaclava on and then go to bed. Like I said, I have my extra wool sweater here ready. My experience is that if I wake up in the middle of night feeling cold, it is enough for me to just put a wool sweater on and then I'm good to go for the rest of the night. It's time to somehow make my way into all of those bags. Wish me luck. I will start now trying to get some sleep and enjoying this experience and this test. It's not an extreme adventure, but it's, it is extremely important to test your gear before going outside properly. Let's talk more about that in the morning and I'll see you guys then. <sighs> Good morning, folks. I just got waken up by a terrible beast. <laughs> Apparently it's around 8 o'clock. I survived the night. Um, there were some good learnings and some bad learnings, let's say that. And one equipment failure, or at least I think there was. I uh, haven't checked yet. But let me get out of all of these bags and pack my things. And let's go back to my gear room, Varusta, where I can actually show you guys what I'm talking about. So here we are in Varusto, my gear room, and I promised to tell you some learnings of last night. So first of all, I did stay warm, at least warm enough. I didn't wake up to being cold. Um, I wore only the base layer that I mentioned last night. This was the wool sweater that I had as a backup there, but I didn't have to use it, luckily enough. And uh, just a second, I have my dog here with me. Oh, this little rascal came to wake me up this morning. Still has a lot of energy, it seems. <laughs> but anyway, so maybe all the learnings can be summarized in one word, practice. A couple of things that I noticed. Definitely practice going in and out sleeping bags when there's multiple of them on top of each other. Luckily enough, I've been in and out of sleeping bags quite a bit, so I had kind of the kind of a intuition of how to do it even when there was four layers on top of me. But definitely there's no shame in practicing that in let's say your living room and definitely practice that also in the dark. I think that adds a whole new level of uh, kind of a challenge, uh, not necessarily discomfort, but challenge figuring out where things are if you can't see them. Even a headlamp on, that doesn't save you a lot when you have four layers of bags on top of you. And in a similar vein, definitely also practice then using these shock cords and things like that that are used to manage the sleeping bag hood and this wind brake or wind baffle or whatever it's called. Especially, for example, in my case, these two bags, I've used both of them quite extensively, but they are from different manufacturers, so the strings and everything, they are in a bit different places, function a bit different way. And when you have everything on top of you, and especially in the dark, it can be quite tricky to figure out what to pull and in which direction to get everything nice and tight around you. So, again, practice. 
Then the third learning for me was that this Thermarest sleeping pad, although not very thick, definitely did the trick. Without it, I know from my own experiences that the Exped inflatable sleeping mat doesn't do as well in super cold temperatures. Although the sleeping mat by Exped is called Sunmat Winterlight LV, LV meaning super long and super wide. It has winter light in its name, so it's supposed to be four season sleeping pad, but as a standalone, I wouldn't go much colder to minus 10 maybe with it. And then Sunmat, of course, refers to the fact that it has synthetic insulation, so it's not kind of a um, premium top of the line sleeping pad anyway, so it doesn't have down insulation. But So together those two did definitely work. However, I did mention an equipment failure and here it is. So this is the Exped sleeping pad and as you probably can tell there should be two of these channels here but now it's only one big channel. So at one point in the night or actually quite early on it first popped up uh, around my legs and then in the middle of the night when I was turning, changing sides or something, it popped up here as well. The amount of air inside didn't change, but when it pops out like this, there's more volume or space inside of it. So it wasn't as full, so it didn't like bounce me off or turn me off the sleeping pad. So at least it kind of worked in the end, but definitely sad to see that this now failed me after four and a half years, I think I've had this sleeping pad. I kind of wish it would have lasted longer, uh, but it is what it is. I will still continue using this if I can, we'll have to see, but definitely um, I cannot now fully inflate this at least anymore because then this gets quite a bit in the way. Let's see if I could actually show it to you guys uh, that it is quite a lot higher up than the rest of the channel. So. That was some pretty unfortunate equipment failure during this test. But all in all, the learnings, I guess, could be summed up with one word, and that is practice. So there's absolutely no shame in practicing indoors and then practicing without light before even going outside to practice with your gear and then doing that properly before going on those longer adventures and staying overnight, especially when it gets to minus 20 and, and, and below that, uh, it's important that you really know your gear inside out and, and understand the capabilities of not just your gear, but also of yourself. And uh, although I've been doing winter camping quite a bit, I've used everything here, uh, all of the gear that I use now um, already, but now combining these in this way, uh, I guess that also brought new learnings and, and, and new confidence in me. So definitely I think it was a good move to practice these things in a safe, controlled environment out there. It was minus 20, minus 21 throughout the night, so I think it's pretty reasonable test. Um, I don't have like super extreme arctic gear or anything like that, so I don't think I could push this setup a lot colder temperatures to that, maybe minus 25 or something. Now I at least know where the limits of my current gear lies, and that's a really good piece of information for me going forward. But hopefully you guys also got some information and maybe inspiration out of this video. Go practice, test out your gear, test out your skills before going on those longer adventures. My name is Joel, you've been watching Tavel Outdoors, thank you so much. I will see you all in the next one.